everybody. This is Raul with Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist and producer Donald Wayne King. He's coming to us out of New York City. Thanks, Donald, for spending some time with us. Um, a lot of you I know have seen Donald laying down some funky jazz lines uh, on our uh, Facebook page, and he's been sharing a lot of music, and he's wearing our colors today. We appreciate your support, man. That's, that's very cool. I'm glad... Glad you do, man. Well, kind of getting caught up and so people can get a chance to know you. Tell us a little bit how you got started on bass and your bass journey. How did that happen? Okay. Uh, well, at the age of 12, I was uh, uh, listening to um, my father play guitar. And um, so in reality, my first deal with strings was um, I started playing the electric guitar, six string guitar. Because mm -hmm. I liked what my father was doing. So uh, he went out and bought me a guitar. I was playing it, I would say, for about a year, learning things. And then I shied away from it because I started hearing bass. Um, and the first person I heard was uh, Lewis Johnson. So I was like, wow, can, I mean, I would like to learn how to play like that. So my, I told my father, and uh, he got me a bass. And from then on, here I am. Uh, the bass, to me, uh, reflects the, the sound of funk. Um, I, I, listening to Parliament, listening to Bootsy Collins, you know, just listening to what they do, I wanted to mimic it. So, um, you know, it took a lot of practice. I started playing better at the age of 16. Gotcha. I was okay at 15, but when I hit 16... That's when I was. We started to play in clubs because I got better. My band that I was playing with, um, you know, uh, consisting of uh, two guitar players, a drummer, me, and a keyboard player, um, they were advanced. I was learning playing with them, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we all learned from each other. But me, I was a beginner. I got better because every time I listened to someone new, uh, like Marcus Miller came in there. Um, uh, Stanley Clark, and then I would also uh, talk with musicians, and they heard me play, and they were amazed that at my age, I was playing what they were playing, and once I found out that I was playing what they were playing, that made me feel better, and I just went on with the bass. I continued with, you know, uh, playing the bass, so my style I like to do slap bass, but I also, you know, do the riffs, and I love rock as well. Gotcha. So, you know, I just learning, and I learned from listening to even guitar players like Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. I like his style, you know. And some, some, uh, in fact, uh, someone wrote that uh, they can hear the influence of rock in my in my bass play. So, um, you know that that. That's it's true because I do listen to it and I listen to uh, BB King, mm -hmm. love BB King. So the guitar player also, I'm influenced by what they do as well and the riffs that they do. And I get on the bass and I try to mimic what the guitar does as well. So by putting these styles together, I develop what I do now. Got you. And it's New York in itself is a whole little fishbowl and i say little but it's certainly not little at all but yeah, yeah. it it is a place where once you can kind of get your foot in the door and you kind of it, there's a hustle that goes to it and that's what we see everybody you know you got to be in perpetual movement you're you know from from one place to the next tell us a little bit about that scene because you grew up in it well um when i I would say we started to play, uh, my band and I at the time, we, we started playing in clubs. Uh, it started out from from the Bronx, then down into Manhattan. And we, we ended up at, at the Celebrity Club. Mm -hmm. It Playing playing down there uh, was somewhat rough because there were people, um, you know, bands that are already established and they're well-known, we were like never. We weren't uh, uh, well known at the time, and um, 
Um, so when we came in, we were, you know, young guys coming in like, what are these guys going to do? And we came in and we jammed. Yeah. And they they were shocked. <laughs> nice. So, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it's like you said, it's a lot of movement, a lot of shuffling and, and, and wheeling and dealing and getting gigs. Gig, gigs at the time were easy to get, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people have problems getting gigs. Because, and, and nowadays it's even tougher, you know, because they want a lot of them want people. People that are already, you know, well known, and it's hard for the little guy to, to get in there. So, um, you know, I guess your sound, if it's good, they're gonna they're gonna want to listen to it. They want to see it live, gotcha. and that's that's what we did back then. So very cool. And as we move forward, obviously you've been with numerous bands. Tell us a little bit about that evolution. What how has that progressed, and what you doing? Uh, well, right now I'm doing more producing and uh, recording okay. um, and playing with my own stuff. I play with soundtracks right now. Uh, my band now, being that I live far away, they're in New York. I'm living like two, three hours out. Okay. It's a little hard for me to get to them and, and have, you know, would work as well. Um, the, the band thing is probably going to start up probably next year. You know, um, the I played in diff- I played with different people, different bands, but my main band, the one I played with in, uh, at the Celebrity Club, uh, I'm more interested in them because of the, they know my style. Gotcha. They know the next note I'm gonna play, or oh, you know, when I'm starting to get funky, and they jump into it too, and that's hard with anyone that you know with another band, they don't know you. So, but uh, yeah, I, I I play with a lot of the uh, jazz, you know, um, up and coming jazz bands back in the day that are no longer around, and some are no longer with us. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I enjoyed it. I think it was, it was a lot of a lot of fun, and um, I, I hope I hope that uh, you know I get to play with some you know real big. Big guys out there. That's that's my goal to gotcha. you know play one of the big. Ones. Yeah. Well, and I I remember seeing on your website it was talking because I know you've got that background in jazz and funk, but you were looking at maybe doing some more R and B kind of stuff too. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of doing well. Um, I I, I also work with another magazine and it's uh, more of a in the R and B and rap gotcha. and um, well they want me to do some R and B. So yes, I'm gonna touch on it i i'm working on a new ep and um hopefully i I get to perform it um um trying to do something in new york and that's what this the ep will be about the new york scene nice so yes and do we have an estimated date of release on your ep what you thinking well probably I would say in a couple more weeks because I'm taking, you know, taking it slow. Yeah. <laughs> well, a couple more weeks <laughs> is soon. I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. get a lot of people that say, well, you know, maybe for next year, maybe for 2019, but a couple oh, of weeks, well, that, that's coming up. Yeah, because I, you know what, it, it, it's like when, when I get the feel and, you know, and, and I hear a tune, I, I just throw it on tracks. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I produce it. I have my own little studio at home, so... I produce it and and I, I push it out and it goes straight, you know, and uh, that's why I, I'm able to do that. So that's I have a lot of EPs around. I've run about nine to ten EPs out. Nice, nice, and people would be able to find out about those on your website. I've got the bassguitarplayer.com. Um, uh, you could see, you could really check me out on YouTube. On YouTube, okay. Yeah, get, uh, YouTube. Yes, YouTube, um, uh, iTunes, uh, Google Play. Just putting in Donald Wayne King and I pop up. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And since we're talking about sound, I know a lot of the video that I've seen you playing, especially on our page, has been stuff that's happened when you were you know, in a store or something. But what gives you your unique sound? What bass are you playing? What gear is your weapon of choice? Oh, I love Stingray. The Stingray bass music, man. Mm-hmm. The, that's the only thing I will touch. 
I, 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 because um, uh, I saw Lewis Johnson playing it, and and the way it sounded, I I stuck with it, and I won't change from it. That's that's my sound. I do like now to to connect with the sound. I like uh, uh, the bass amp. It's called the hard key. Okay. I like hard key amps. I like hard key and um, uh, Fender. Mm-hmm. But hard key to me is number one. Gotcha. Well, of course, hard key's a, a, a heavy hitter there in New York. He's Larry hangs yes. around at Sam Bash all the time. So, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. I um, because I, the first time I I played on a hard key. I like the punch when I'm because I, I I love slap, the slap bass technique. So mm-hmm. when you when you hit the string and you hit that, it's like a big push to it. I love it. So you know, and you create better. You know, so rhythm. You know, like a, like the, the percussion and, and drums and it's once you have that push on the bass, you do anything with it. Gotcha. You know. And are you doing much in the way of pedals? I know a lot of people. It's kind of either they do or they don't. Um, I, I I was messing around with them, and uh, eventually I think I will because mm-hmm. um I'm listening to what everyone's doing. Sometimes you got to change it up a bit. Yeah, you know. And I like I like to be versatile, and I like to be open to sound, and uh and definitely I mean you know with guitar I do play with the with the uh you know the distortion pedals and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but not much with the bass. So I'm just thinking about it's funny you say that because i was thinking about checking some out tomorrow <laughs> you know the bass pedals yeah yeah i'm gonna probably make you know I'm, I'm i'm open to it i'm gonna check it out gotcha well and a lot of times it really kind of hinges on the music and the kind of music that you're playing and you know so like if you're doing death metal some some distortion some fuzz yes that that yes. fits in really well but um, a classic example, you'll get somebody like um, Chuck Rainey, who is, you know, laying down some Steely Dan kind of stuff. He's just looking for the bass. You know, it's it's that yes, voice that he's yes. looking for, you know? Uh, yeah, it goes by what you're looking for, Yeah, basically. Totally. Or, or whatever that is. Yeah. Very cool. And you mentioned producing. Are you producing, you're producing other groups? as well what have you got going on there producer I'm right now I'm just doing my music but i am going to start producing um uh other artists um i've been asked they like you know what i'm doing and that's where i'm kind of moving into the r&b a little bit just to touch on it gotcha. um i you know this is this of all there's always money in that part in, in, in that you know uh playing r&b and uh you know why not get some? <laughs> I got you, know? you. I got you. Well, and with New York, you've got a lot of possibilities. You can certainly stay busy uh, there. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of one thing or another. A lot of other people have to end up touring because they live in a place where you really got to branch out to be able to play other places, you know. So yes. kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. Um oh. Anyway, uh, Donald, we appreciate you taking time to ta- to chat with us and share a little bit about your bass journey. Of course, we appreciate the music that you share with us all the time. And people, we want to definitely keep an eye out for uh, Donald's uh, EP that should be coming up shortly. We'll have to check out your YouTube page, uh, looking under Donald Wayne King, and hear more of your music and kind of stay in touch and make sure that we're, we're uh, hearing what you're doing. Thank you, Raul. Okay, so you've seen it here, people. Coming to you live, Donald Wayne King on Bass Musician Magazine.